Hi everyone, today we will be studying a poem titled, Education of Nature, or Three Years She Grew in Sun and Shower written by William Wordsworth. In this video, I will first give you a brief introduction of the poet and the poem. Then I will explain the poem line by line. William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth was born in the 7th of April 1770 and he died in the 23rd of April 1850. He was an English Romantic poet. He and his friend, Samuel Taylor Coleridge launched the Romantic Age in English literature with their joint publication of Lyrical Ballads in 1798. Wordsworth is best known for Lyrical Ballads and the Prelude, The Education of Nature, or, Three Years She Grew in Sun and Shower, is a poem composed in 1798 by William Wordsworth. It was first published in the collection, Lyrical Ballads. It is one of the five poems in the Lucy series. Lucy poems are written by Wordsworth in memory of his daughter, Catherine, who died of polio. First stanza three years she grew in sun and shower, then nature said, a lovelier flower on earth was never sown, this child I to myself will take, she shall be mine, and I will make a lady of my own. In the first stanza the speaker tells the reader about Lucy as a three-year-old child. Lucy is a lively young girl, living her life in the sun or in the rain. She was very adorable and nature also found her lovely. Nature compares Lucy with a flower in the second line. She says that there was never a lovelier flower on earth than Lucy. In other words, Lucy is the loveliest child in the world according to nature. She thinks that no child will ever be more lovelier than Lucy. In the third, fourth and fifth line, nature describes her plan and dream to adopt Lucy as a child of her own. She wants Lucy to be her own child and desires to take care of Lucy, and teach her to become a lady just like her. Second stanza, myself will to my darling be both law and impulse, and with me the girl, in rock and plain, in earth and heaven, in glade and bower, shall feel an overseeing power to kindle or restrain. In the second stanza the idea of adopting Lucy is elaborated. Nature plans to become both the law and impulse for Lucy. She will go with Lucy to different places. She plans to take Lucy in the rocks, plains, earth, heaven, glade and bower. Words like, rock, plain, earth, glade, bower, all serve to emphasize Lucy's closeness to nature. Lucy will grow in her company among the rocks and plains, glades, and bowers. By growing up this way, Lucy will have an overseeing power and will learn how to kindle or restrain. It will make her feel the power of nature and she will know how to inspire or control others. Third stanza. She shall be sportive as the fawn that wild with glee across the lawn or up the mountain springs. And hers shall be the breathing balm, and hers the silence and the calm of mute and sensate things. In the third stanza, nature says that Lucy will become as active as a fawn, that happily jumps or dances across the lawns and the mountains. She will actively enjoy and dance in all the beautiful places in nature like the lawns and mountain springs. By living close to nature she will get the knowledge of each and everything that belongs to nature. She would also be able to enjoy the silence and the calm of non-living things. Fourth stanza. The floating clouds their state shall lend to her, for her the willow bend, nor shall she fail to see Evan in the motions of the storm grace that shall mold the maiden's form by silent sympathy. In the fourth stanza, nature imagines that the floating clouds will lend or give to Lucy, the willow trees will also bend for her. She will understand even the movements of the storms and in the middle of the storm, she will not fail to see grace. This kind of grace will make her a beautiful maiden, full of silence and sympathy. Fifth stanza. The stars of midnight shall be dear to her, and she shall lean her ear in many a secret place, where rivulets dance their wayward round, and beauty born of murmuring sound shall pass into her face. In the fifth stanza, nature continues saying that Lucy will be dear even to the stars, she will be loved even by the stars in heaven. She will listen to sounds in secret places. These secret places are where the small streams dance and beautiful melody is created by all the sounds of nature. And all these things will make Lucy more beautiful. Sixth stanza. And vital feelings of delight shall rear her form to stately height, her virgin bosom swell, 
such thoughts to Lucy I will give, while she and I together live here in this happy dell. In the sixth stanza nature is talking about the happiness Lucy will get from nature. All the different aspects of nature will make Lucy taller. Her pure body will continue to grow and she will become mature and beautiful. After that she will live happily ever after with nature. Seventh stanza. Thus nature spake, the work was done, how soon my Lucis race was run. She died, and left to me this heap, this calm and quiet scene, the memory of what has been, and never more will be. Here, the speaker describes how nature fulfilled her dream. As soon as nature finished speaking of her dream of adopting and living with Lucy, she started working. Nature adopted Lucy by making her physical body die. Lucy's life was over because she was taken away by nature. The speaker expressed his sadness over Lucy's death in the last three lines. Lucy died and she leaves behind only her memories in the poet's mind. After her death, the poet's life was quiet and silent. The place now seems like a wasteland because the lively atmosphere made by Lucy was gone. He now has only his memory of Lucy. If you enjoyed or find this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more videos.